Hello, Church of Our Savior. It is Wednesday, November 11th. As many of you know, I lived in Rhode Island for a number of years, both before and after seminary. And during this political season, I found myself thinking about the Rhode Island State House, and in particular, of a statue that stands at the very top of the dome of that State House. It's called the Statue of the Independent Man. Both the name and the image itself resonate strongly in our culture. There's something about the rugged individualist, the one able to stand alone, that is deeply embedded in the American psyche. It really does shape the way we understand ourselves and the way we understand our human nature. But it strikes me how much at variance that is with the way the Bible understands our human nature. Because from the very beginning, when God breathes the breath of life into Adam and Eve is formed from Adam's rib, the biblical story emphasizes that human nature is relational. We exist only in relationship with God, our creator, and in relationship with each other. The Hebrew scriptures of the Old Testament really tell the story of the people of Israel and the way the Israelites relate to their God, relate to each other, relate to the world around them. And that theme becomes even more prominent in the New Testament. You know, Jesus understands himself very much as a relational being. He exists in relationship with his Father and in relationship with the people who are around him. Those people matter to him and form who he is. In John's Gospel, he says, I no longer call you servants. I call you my friends because I have made known to you everything that I have received from my Father. In the most intimate, the most vulnerable moments of his earthly existence, Jesus is there with his friends. And he extends that sense of relationship beyond his inner circle to include everybody who's hurting, everybody who is suffering. So he says to his followers, whatever you do to the least of these, you do to me. And the Apostle Paul carries forward this theme very strongly. His letters are all written to communities, often reminding them that they are communities. They are only to exist as groups of people relating to each other. And it's their relationship that really forms who they are. And in fact, Paul's most compelling image for the church is this idea of the church as the body of Christ, where everything is interrelated. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. The head cannot say to the feet, I have no need of you, because we all need each other. We have no identity apart from each other. The Bible emphasizes that this is true. But I think we can also see the truth of that existentially just by looking at our own lives. After all, who am I? I really am the sum total of all my relationships. My relationship with God, my relationship with my parents, my siblings, my wife, my children, my loved ones, my friends, my parishioners, my community. There is no me that somehow separated from all that. I am intricately intertwined with the people around me. They and my relationship with them really do form my identity. This is why the idea of individual salvation that is so popular in our culture is also so problematic. Because if, as the storyline goes, I die and I go to heaven, but my loved ones don't, am I really in heaven? Well, no, because those loved ones are part of who I am. I don't have an identity separate. 
from all the people who I love, all the people who love me. This is not just a spiritual truth. It is a scientific reality. Biology shows us that we are all part of a vast ecosystem. An ecosystem in which everything is interconnected. Everything is interdependent, whether we like it or not. And quantum physics shows the same thing. It says that all of reality is relational. You get down to the very subatomic building blocks of matter, quarks, and we find that they are inexplicably and unbreakably in relationship with each other. Quantum entanglement shows that that relational nature of reality infuses all of creation, affecting everything. It is just the nature of reality. And not just the nature of reality, but the nature of ultimate reality. Because look at the language we use to talk about God. What is God? God is Trinity. God is relationship. Father loving Son. Son loving Father. The Spirit being the love that flows between them. That statue on top of the Rhode Island State House. The independent man is a myth. All of us exist only in relationship to God and to each other. Mystics have experienced this for eons. Scientists attest to it. Artists, musicians, poets give voice to it. So I'd like to, to share with you, uh, in that spirit, one particular poem uh, written by a man named John Donne. John Donne was a brilliant poet, 17th century England, who's also a priest of the Church of England, the dean of St. Paul's Cathedral, and one of the great preachers of his day. This poem is entitled, No Man is an Island. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as any manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. And therefore, Never sin to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. As of the time that I am recording this, some 240,000 Americans have died of COVID-19. That number extends to 1.2 million worldwide. Around the globe, Hundreds of thousands of new cases are being reported every day. We are all in this together. God grant us the vision to see ourselves for who we truly are, to see ourselves as part of a greater whole. And God grant us the compassion and the courage to live accordingly and to work always for the common good. I'll have more to say about this next week. Until then, God loves you. I love you. Peace.